Uh, the plan for the day is I'm going to put a first coat of sealer on the bottom of the loom. I got it all cleaned up. After I get that first coat of sealer on, I'm going to work on the undertail detail and any of the white spots that are on the other underside and then any of the white belly feathers that flow up over the side pocket feathers. And once I get that done, it this should be dry enough for me to flip it over and um, do the uh, spots on the top side because that's um, the step that will be followed next. So I'm going to use my deft um, gloss. This is quite the old can. But they don't make it the same anymore. I don't like the new formula. I liked the satin, my favorite, but this is a brand new can of the, uh, gloss. So we're going to use that up. The only difference between the gloss and the satin is that there's been talc, talcum added to, um, the polyurethane for that satin finish. I'm using a stiff brush with slightly rounded edges so I can go right up to the edge of the bird. This bird will never be floated like many of my birds are. Uh, this one, it's a decorative. Wayne Dykowski's getting it. I believe it will go up to his cabin. And sometimes I use a, basically a pastry brush. Um, that you would use in the kitchen, uh, a one inch or a, a two inch width to um, do this. But a lot of times those are kind of cheap brushes and those bristles come off and get stuck in the sealer. And I don't want to have to deal with that today. So I'm just using a better quality natural bristle brush that I use for applying base coats and sealer. Um, let's bring it right up to that edge. Usually it takes three or four coats to get a good um, coverage and the reason I like to do that many, a lot of people just do a couple, is that the wear and tear on this bird over the years is going to happen on the bottom and um, so that's why I, I don't sign with a pencil. I would burn my name and insignia and dates and stuff in. And then I put on enough layers to guard that surface from being placed on a shelf or wherever. So 
Some people put those felt dots on, but I don't really go for that. I'm just going back over and there's, you can always see some area that absorbed more or less sealers. So I'm just kind of going over right past that first time for a, it's a slightly different color. It also isn't as shiny. So after you do these coats, because you've done so many of them, you can come back if you need to, or desire to, and um, with some really fine, like, 4 rot steel wool, you can polish up the bottom and uh, take off any brush marks that might show. Again, I think Tan Brunet used to put like 30 coats of deft sealer on the bottoms of his birds. And I could see why, because he had such beautiful detail. He burned in and uh, you just don't want that to get ruined. If you just pause for a minute, take a look, you can see places where it's a little lighter than in others. Okay. So I'm gonna leave it at that on this first coat. And I'll start working on the tail. Underside. I'm not going to seal this up too much because I'll be coming back to it. Meanwhile, I'll set it out of my way. And I need to uh, pour some lacquer thinner <clears throat> to clean up this brush. And I don't pour a lot because I'm just going to let the brush suck it up, wipe, let the brush suck it up again, and wipe. That way, I'm not wasting lacquer thinner. My brush is clean when I'm going to do the next pass and clean all this up. The next time. So. On these tail feathers, I've already done the top individual tail feathers, now I'm going to do the bottom. And as I turn this, I'm, I don't want to rub the top of the head, but I want to make these tail feathers available to me. So, um, take a piece of paper towel and just kind of 
kind of create a support to keep the loom from rolling to the one side, keeping it even. There. That way I can lay in the tail feathers. sitting. It's always a good idea to, you know to some degree, because if I leave this for say days on end, it will thicken up and because it's evaporated. So I freshen up any old medium that I was using from the day before with just a little bit of new stuff. For good measure. So I'm going to start by laying in the individual tail feathers with just the dark brown that I have mixed. I don't, I'm not going to fret about if I get them exactly the way that I want them because I'm going to be able to come back and clean it up until they are the way I want them to be. you got to remember those tail feathers are emulating from the center and out like this. So when I draw them... with the paint and I lay them in. I'm keeping that in mind. So I do it lightly and then when I, I'm sure that I'm the way I want them to be laid out. I come in with a darker line. adjustments along the way that I feel are necessary. Well, I imagine. 
imagine. Oh, this is a stiff, flat-ended brush. What I'm doing is imagining the uh, where that quill is going to be. be representative of barbs. Tail feathers are really quite uh, medium beige underneath. They're not white. And the most critical one is the outermost on either side, the smallest one. When it comes to your barb flow. So now I'm going to uh, add a little bit of shadow. Black, carbon black. Wiping off most of the paint. There you see, I put my finger in there. Find a place for my finger.
getting a little bit of brown. Let that set up a little bit while I uh, add some feather detail to his lower tail coverts. Using uh, the dark brown. As you see, I've taken off a lot of that paint I picked up off of my brush onto the paper towel before I touch the bird. You'll get a feel for your brush after you use it a little while and know when you need to. take off some of that paint it absorbs and can hold only so much when it's a fully loaded brush according to its um, you know, number of bristles the size of it and this is quite small Often a band of uh, darker feathers across the lower tail coverts. But first, I want to get these laid in. Feathered out. And as with everything else, as they get bigger, I can move a little bit faster. Your opportunity to add contour by curving your strokes just a little bit. You don't want your feathers um, to look like Christmas trees by painting on stiff barbs. I see a lot of Christmas tree feathers in the novice division. 
So consider when you're looking at your wood burning or your painting. Because once you wood burn feathers in, you can't change it with the paint. You can only put the color and shading and highlights in the right place. You know, when you're painting a smoothie, it's different because you do have the ability to make those changes. But it's hard to be accurate in paint where you can be really accurate with a wood burner and put in every one of those barbs. And then just put the oil paint color on top of it, but this is a half and half decorative. Carved all the feathers, but I didn't wood burn them. And painting in oils like this is a kind of a little bit of an experiment and you know I, I wanted to see if I like painting decoratives in oils and uh, decorative smoothies that is and quite honestly I don't and, um, as much as I do in acrylic. When it comes to a fully out decor decorative bird that's been wood burned completely, I'm oils all the way. But smoothies, it's not as easy if you want fine detail. And, you know, that's why I decided I'd do this. I really wanted to know what I'd like the best. And I wanted you to show you guys, because many of you ask, can you paint a smoothie in oils? Well, I can, and I'm doing it. But, uh, I have a full-size common loon in the uh, Minnesota Historical Museum that was painted in oils, my first smoothie, my first actually gunning loon, and it was painted in oils. And my, uh,